On the agenda tonight, we're going to be having a listen to the isolated vocal of Julie Andrews performing a medley of musical hits. Hello, Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. If you enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. We have an interesting one tonight because we're going to be taking a look at Julie Andrews' isolated vocal, but we're also going to be addressing something that's been happening in the comments section of my other video that I did on Julie Andrews. There's actually two others, but this is relating to the performance we're going to be looking at tonight because... There have been multiple comments that do say, yep, yeah, Julie Andrews oh, is fantastic, great voice, but unfortunately this is lip synced or she's miming. And just to quote one of those kind of comments, it says, well, that is straight up lip sync. Sadly, TV just had to do that. That literally is the song from the movie. So... I do explain in the video how they've even mic'd this up for TV and that it is live. And I've got reference speakers so it's clearly live when I'm listening to it or maybe it's just my ears that can tell it's definitely live. So what I've done is isolated the vocal on the live performance. We're going to compare that with the isolated vocal from the movie, the one that was done in the studio. As I said in that previous video, the microphone is not in shot. It'll be on a boom mic, which means it's above her head, but it's directional, so it'll be pointing down at her, picking up all of the sound and also picking up a fair amount of the resonant space. So we'll hear a lot more reverb potentially and <laughs> just to throw a spoiler in there we do have a lot of reverb I think they've added quite a lot to the desk because that's something that can be done in live performances it's just a little bit overdone with the reverb but anyway I just jump into this because it's the isolated vocal it picks up the crowd applauding and a lot of the instruments in the background as well but we'll just have a quick listen to get our ears used to it And of course, on the right hand side of the screen, we can see the waves that we've got going on, which is Julie's voice. The other waves that we can see now is going to look a bit complicated on screen, but these are the vocal waves that are from the original, so recorded in the studio. And let me just mute this. And we're just now going to listen to, obviously there's no video with the studio version. I could look at the film, but then it'll probably get struck down on copyrights. So we'll just have a listen. The hills fill my heart with the sound of music. Now I'm hoping that you can immediately hear the difference between this vocal and the live vocal just in the production side of things. This is actually a really dry vocal and this is from the movie. So they recorded this in the studio and then didn't really add anything to it. They just allowed Julie's vocal to shine because it was that good. So now we'll go back to the live performance and we'll get rid of these waves here. My heart wants to sing every song And hopefully you can start to hear the extra reverb we've got on this live performance. My heart wants to beat like the wings of the birds that rise from the lake to the trees. And what I'm going to do just to show how much of an amazing vocalist Julie Andrews was with this particular performance, but just in the studio, live, whenever. I'm going to allow the other song to play at the same time. We'll keep all of the waveforms on screen. Obviously, they're going to be as accurate because she was just that accurate a singer. My heart wants to beat like the wind, like the birds of the birds from the lake to the trees. And here we get a really similar situation that we had with Karen Carpenter, where it sounded like just a delay on her voice because it was that accurate. And we have exactly the same situation in that Julie Andrews is more accurate live than she was in front of the microphone in the studio. My heart wants to fly like a child, 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 a child
like to a broom laugh when it like trips a broom and when it trips over stones on its way, on its way. To And there we have it. Here is a classic case of being able to hear the difference between her singing live and in the studio. But it's really difficult to tell because she's so good. I mean, unless you're listening out for the production quality of being able to hear all the breathing, hearing all of the expression in her voice that is actually taken out a little bit in the studio. For example, adding a ds -er to make the S's slightly less offensive, having less of the breathing in there, sometimes even having a noise gate so that you don't hear anything between the vocals, but live it's a lot more difficult to apply that unless it's post-processed and added afterwards. But anyway, uh, let me just take this back because I want you to focus on a particular line and we'll listen to the live version first. First, see if you can spot the difference. Like a lark who is learning to pray. Like a lark who is learning to pray. That's what we're going to be listening out for. And now in the studio. With the night, like a lark who is learning to pray. And the great thing is that the pitch monitoring software is basically doing our job for us so that we don't need her is. And this is the whole point of using the technology is so that you guys can hear what I can hear. Even if you can't hear it, you can see what I can hear. That's the point. So when we take this back and let me just write, rewind it here. We'll have a little listen again. With the night, like a lark. On like a lark. Look at the way on your screens. We go down and let's listen to it to see exactly what Julie does. She's got this like a lark, like a lark. She goes down and we can see it. She goes down and then goes up to the F4. So now if I get rid of that and bring up the other live version and I'll take it back again. Like a lark. She was straight there, like a lark, like a lark, just instantly on that note. And we can see it here. This is the F4, exactly the same note with no run up to it. She just hit it bang on. So that's how you can tell a live performance from a recording. Tiny details like this that I can hear. And I think a lot of musicians, producers will be able to hear these differences. But people that just watch and maybe even singers that don't have a developed ear for this kind of thing, hearing really subtle differences in the voice between one take and another take, they'll think that this is lip synced, but it's not, and it's definitely not. And it's great that we now have the technology where I can prove beyond any doubt that it's different because the waves, the vocal waves you can see on screen differ from the live version and then the recorded version in the studio. And hopefully once you've seen it on screen, you can start to hear the difference between those two. So now we know what we're listening for. Let's do it again. Like a lark who is learning to pray. Like a lark who is... I mean, it is actually quite dramatic that that slide up, that glissando that we have. It's actually interesting as well that the version in the studio starts out a little bit faster than the live performance, but then the live performance starts to overtake the version in the studio. So it really shows you the ebb and flow in the performances, but also with the backing that it is so free just to be expressive because we're not strict with the timings here and obviously when it goes out of sync you know that this is a live performance because she's not singing along to a backing track because that'll be timed in exactly the same way as the movie let's have a listen to it the hills are alive. so we start pretty much bang on in time And now we've started in the studio faster than the live performance. And there's a great example because it doesn't it make any sense to the ears because it is so out of sync. Let me take it back a little bit to see if we don't quite go out as much here. Oh, 
So now you can hear how far behind the studio version is from this live performance. If we are looking at this in real detail, then we can see that Julie is more accurate in this live TV show performance than she was with that performance for the movie. So just having a listen to the first few notes. So this D5 here is spot on live. And also at the beginning of this performance, we have a reference point, a chord that comes in. It sounds like they say G, uh, but it's actually a C that's being played. Watch the other analysis video that I did because I did mention that. It would be pointless to have that guide if you're just miming. But anyway, so that D5. We are dead on the D5 here. Now let's go to the Sound of Music movie version. And here on the D5, she's sharp and she actually goes up and touches the D sharp five. So, I mean, that's a semitone off that she goes with the first note in the movie. The are alive. And you can see how we ascend with that note. Whereas when we go back to the live performance, it is just dead on that line. So again, it's something that you can hear if you are sensitive enough to pitch and have been listening to this kind of thing a lot and analyzing it a lot, of course. Just to mention quickly about the pitch accuracy, because this is something that you get with Julie just bang on notes with that really consistent vibrato all the time. She very rarely just hits a straight note. She always gets that vibrato in there. But as we go through, I mean, you'll be able to see this even with the studio version, if I get rid of that we can see that it's just the same voice. It's exactly the same voice <laughs> and arguably more accurate live, but here, exactly the same frequency of vibrato and just dead over the lines all the time. Let's have a listen to this isolated vocal. When my heart is lonely, I know I will hear what I've heard before. I mean, listen to that control. And when we do look at these vocal waves, you'll see how we are not directly on lines. Well, I mean, we are <laughs> directly over the lines, but we don't follow the lines all the time. Here on the F4, you can see how when Julie just leaned into the sound a little bit more, it just got pushed a little bit sharp and then came back down to be just bang on the line again. So this is what happens when you're looking at a real voice. I mean, this is just super accurate, but it's not going to be just dead on the lines all the time. And again, we've got this really consistent vibrato here again, really accurate. I mean, it is just pitch perfect to the ear, but technically we are flat of the note here. So we're not going to be getting just notes straight on lines. We've got this really nice vibrato all the time. And again, good example here of being just sharp and then relaxing down to the E4 with this constant vibrato the whole time. So just to finish with, I want to jump into the final note of this live performance because Julie goes into I could have danced all night. That's what we finish with. And we'll have this isolated vocal with the waves up on screen as well. And there we have it, as we can see on screen, we've got the G5. I do have the ranges on screen as well. So if you want to refer back to those, then you can do because we've got the G5, which will be all the way up here. You can see that we are getting towards that top end of the soprano range and right at the top of the mezzo-soprano range, just a tone underneath that at the G5. But anyway, getting into the vocal waves we've got going on here, I've now, I mean, this is what you want to look out for. This little slide up that we have. Listen out for that because I'm going to now play the recorded version that isn't the live version and try and hear the differences between the 
two versions. Listen to this again. So there's a slide up. I mean, it is subtle, but it's definitely there. We can see it on the screen, a slide up to the G5. So the blue colors are the waves from the recorded version. So I'll take this back. And actually what I'm gonna do is get rid of that. So we can just hear this by itself. And I mean, straight away, it's a bit of a giveaway because if I make it bigger on your screens so that you can see it, when I jumped in there, you can see that we haven't got any slide up to this final note. I'll take it back. Let's hear a little bit more of that last section. I could have dance, dance, dance. Listen to how clean that G5 is, but the way that Julie on the recorder version goes straight into it. There's no slide up and live she threw in a little slide there. It was subtle but this is how you tell the difference between a live performance and uh, a recorded audio or any pretty much any difference between two vocals. You just look at it in detail and it's not difficult to see especially when you use a pitch monitor. You can see the slide up into this final note live but then on the recorded version just hit it straight. So therefore we know that what we're looking at in this TV performance was live. They're using a boom mic. You get to hear a lot more reverb, a lot more of that acoustic space. So to reference what I'm going to title this video as just saying is Julie Andrews too good at singing and <laughs> it probably is the case that people in the current generation and the younger generation can't tell the difference between a vocal that was done in a studio and a live vocal because it was just so good it's so accurate compared to the two they just assume oh it must be the same vocal that they're using on the live performance but it's great that we can now point out we can lay it to rest that vocalists like this are just this good they sound the same in the studio as they do live and they can be better live than they were in the studio. And that's exactly what we had with Karen Carpenter. And those kind of singers now are starting to maybe not get the credit they deserve because people are assuming what they're watching is lip synced. But it's great now that with the advancement in technology, we can lay it to rest and I can show you guys objectively that factually we have got a live performance here because we can compare it to the studio version and see that they are wildly different in the sounds with the isolated vocal but also the vocal waves that we see on screen but anyway thank you guys so much for suggesting that i have another look at julie andrews for requesting her vocal waves on screen but it's a great opportunity to just give credit where it's due to a singer like julie who could just nail it live as well as if not better than in a studio setup so Anyway, if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. As always, let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Keep those requests coming and I will see you guys at the next one. Rock!